everybody. Thanks for joining me here and thanks for checking out my podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the notification bell for new episodes. You can also find Shine Without Shame on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. As I hear you talk about this, I'm also realizing anytime that those things overlap, like exercise and social, if I'm exercising with a friend or exercise and diet, if I'm like making food with a friend, like you said, um, the, it just drastically increases the <laughs> the positiveness of my experience as well. So um, I don't know what, you know, that's kind of interesting as well. Um, I think so. But... And I think for people who live with people, you know, maybe they have partners or they have roommates, mm -hmm. whatever, everybody has a different uh, set of yeah. circumstances, but hopefully people can find people in their environments who are willing to be supportive. You know, I think everybody wins, right? Everybody needs to yeah. eat well. Everybody needs to do some sort of movement <laughs> yeah. if they can, if they're physically able to do some kind of movement and socializing again, that's all these things are free or low cost. And, but finding people who already are, you know, in our lives, whether they're immediately in our environments or who we know and we trust and we are willing to bring into more intimately, maybe into um, our lives and say, Hey, you know, I've, I've got this going on. I'm trying to work through this. Would you be willing to support me in these ways? It's, you know, it, it's, mm -hmm. it's, this is, I think how we get better. I think that the, these steps again, yes, you're doing this amazing research with these drugs that can potentially open up more doors and give people more opportunities to maybe or different opportunities uh, to explore healing and mental health. Mm -hmm. um, but until again, until people can, a lot of people, a lot more people can access. Yeah. Um, until those, it makes it to I the clinic, it'll be, I think it'll it's be, just, um, yeah. I think we, we are, we're the resources that we need. If that makes sense. Like we, yeah, I love that. Yeah. You know, we, we can find our own ways to get what we need. And I, I think it's interesting. Like you, I think you mentioned this, that there's a, it's all, you didn't say it in these words, but it's like, they're, I think the healing, I wonder what you think about this, the healing that can come from feeling connected to people, right? Uh, mm -hmm. That social connection. We know that we're hardwired to connect. Mm -hmm. That's definitely been studied. And mm -hmm. I think even if you aren't a scientist, you just know, I feel I feel better when I connect with people who, you know, who I trust, who I feel safe Absolutely. with. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I, there seems to be, I don't know what the science shows, but there seems to be uh, an improvement in people's Absolutely. mental health. I know yeah. I, my spirits are lifted when I'm around right, people right. who I love and who I um, trust. I've so, been able to, yeah. yeah, just by connecting sometimes. Right. You know, so what, what you're... Yeah. move through uh maybe something yeah. that i was trying to trying to move past or or, or work through a, a challenge in my life so it's almost like i think that there's more healing that can happen I, I think we can give maybe more credit or or at least be curious about how healing i'm using that word very generally but <laughs> in the context of what we're talking about mental health and uh mental health essentially um which obviously affects our bodies too um I think there's a healing that happens when we do find that kind of connection that is meaningful. Um, again, I don't know if science has looked at this, but it seems <laughs> that it's worth exploring more, putting more, a little bit more value maybe even into these other areas of life that we think are just sort of like, okay, yeah, that's nice. Well, I have to eat food because I'm human. That's what we have to do. And they say I'm supposed to, you know, move and I'm supposed to be in shape. <laughs> uh, and I guess I have to socialize because that's what we do. <laughs> but it's like, well, maybe all of this is more than just uh, like banal, like everyday things that right. we just sort of take for granted, maybe there's more value in them than we realize. So I I'm just offering that as an idea for people to maybe explore yeah. and get creative. It doesn't have to look one way. Right. And, and it's funny, it's funny you, you, you go here because, um, the social interaction, like what exactly is transferred with social interaction? What make, what about being social helps you feel better? Um, 
That is a question that has puzzled many and a question that people are asking right now and hopefully finding some answers. Um, and a study that's come out of this lab um, recently was the the social transfer of certain um, of certain states where um, if you if you put two mice in in a box and one of them is feeling pain, the other one, even though no pain is induced, will will also start showing symptoms of feeling pain. Um, which is how does that happen? What kind of social transfer is happening there that can make someone? Um, feel a certain way, even when it's not necessarily founded in, you know, physiology, it's more of a social transfer of something. So we call that like social transfer of pain, which is really interesting. And then you, they, they took it a step further. The mouse that is in pain, you know, phys in physiological pain was given analgesia and the other mouse was previously in pain now started feeling, uh, showing symptoms of analgesia. So it's wow. not just social transfer of pain it's also social transfer of analgesia and the, so the social and transfer of these is oh sorry um like kill, uh, pain killing yes. killing pain yeah um yeah it's a good point um and so the social transfer of these like states of mind is something that is just fascinating at least to me and something that i you know i wish i could look into further maybe you know if i <laughs> have any ideas that would be interesting to test with that um but there just definitely seems to be some unknown factor that is transferred through social interaction that, you know, um, some sort of connection that kind of brings brings you closer together, if not emotionally, but like by your mental state. Um, and I just think that's fascinating and probably another reason why social interaction is so important. Um, so, yeah. Thanks for not understate that. the value of that. Yeah. Of course, people always appreciate the science and they, <laughs> I, for some people that's like, they won't accept something without that science, but I always like to balance it and say, I would love to know what the science says, but I also just know <laughs> what I experience in my own life. And I know mm. I, maybe I can't prove it, but I know what it does for my life and for my mental state. So mm. I appreciate, you know, having, having your, your own, uh, professional, yeah experience and you know, like based on ba based on this i've kind of realized that i really like spending time around people who are happier because it makes me a lot happier it's like yes. wow crazy that that's true you know that's like so i mean crazy but not crazy um right and so that i mean this is kind of like the focus of you know <laughs> some of my strategies is just like spending time around people who i would like to embody that energy and that has been very helpful as well um so if there's anything I can recommend, you know, non-clinically, that would definitely be one thing um, is just spend time around people whose energies you just love and who <laughs> you maybe you, you could maybe wish you were a little bit, you know, happier or um, uh, maybe maybe more carefree or maybe, you know, it, whatever it is um, <sighs> that it's it's just it's been very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm so happy and to hear you say that. And yes, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think that as we do, as we practice these, this more, you know, like the idea of being seeking out people who are more positive or more happy, then they're also, I, I've witnessed this in my own life there, there sometimes can be a little bit of a, of a sticky point that also can happen. I'm not trying to focus on the negative, but I just want to point out the reality is that sometimes when people are not feeling great, like their spirits are low, mm -hmm. they're maybe a little depressed or they're anxious or they're a lot depressed, but, but for the people who recognize that they want to be happier and they want to maybe look for other people who are mm -hmm. Being more positive or or seem more positive, you know, it's it's also I think it also helps everybody be, how do I say this, like more accountable in some way. In mm. other words, yeah, it's not that like if I don't feel happy and I want to be around someone who's happy, that I'm just gonna take all that from them and not right give something back. You know, there's there's an opportunity to take. kind of give, yeah. but like be reciprocal, and it, that Absolutely. can look differently. If if I'm not if right now this week or this month or this year, I'm feeling lousy. My spirits are low. I'm not feeling happy, uh, right. but I want to be happier. And I want to seek out people who are operating from that place. You know, 
um, okay, maybe I can't, if I socialize, if I hang out with people, maybe I can't right now give a whole load of like happiness, but maybe there's <laughs> something else I have to give. Mm -hmm. Not like a tit for tat. That's not what I'm saying. Not like keeping score, you know, socially, but, right. but it's an opportunity also to become a little more mindful about, well, what do I have to offer? And maybe it, it helps right. us also be more accountable so that everybody is share is everybody's sharing something positive from themselves. I know mm -hmm. that I'm getting like very philosophical. It's very deep, but <laughs> yeah. I think that, that because I've, wit I mean... I've witnessed how this sometimes can, can cause challenges for people because sometimes people yeah. feel like they're giving a lot and they're not receiving or vice versa. Somebody is taking a mm -hmm. lot and they're not giving. So I'm not wagging my finger at that. I'm saying this is an opportunity to explore, to be more mindful well, how do I contribute to relationships mm -hmm. or how am I yeah. contributing to social situations? And if I'm, yeah. again, if I'm not maybe able to contribute loads of happiness, what <laughs> else, do, what else do I have to yeah. give? Cause everybody has something. Right. Right. Usually it's more than just something or one <laughs> thing, but I, we can all find one thing, no matter what's yeah. going on in our lives that we know will be a worthy contribution. Or mm -hmm. if we don't believe that yet, I would recommend starting mm -hmm. to explore that maybe through journaling. What is it that I have to give? What is it that I just naturally, no matter what's going on in my life, I just always bring this, you know, this one thing to mm -hmm. any given situation. So just, I'm adding a kind of a deeper la layer to this idea of connecting with people and doing that, you know, to improve our lives. Well, we also in, you know, affect other people. And so it's, it's a, it's a very dynamic, multifaceted right, yeah. uh, approach, but I appreciate that we're, we're exploring this here. Yeah. Yeah. No, thank you for this conversation. I mean, this, this is all like very, very interesting. And I, a lot of the things I've been thinking about in my life. And you know, Isn't that um, the way it yeah. works? You know, uh, yeah, we, we think about these things, we explore them, and then we end up, we do end up kind of gravitating toward people who are also on mm -hmm. the same, you know, like-minded on the same page. So <laughs> I appreciate, yes. I appreciate that. And I appreciate Absolutely. what you're, what you're bringing to the conversation. And I wanted to, if you are open to talking about yeah. another aspect of your work, which is your educational Absolutely. work at Stanford, I know that you, oh yes, that you do work through or with the Office of Substance Use for Student Education. Would you right. talk a little bit about that? Share yeah. about what that work is, looks like, and absolutely. what are the impacts? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for asking. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, on top of, you know, working here in my research lab, I also volunteer with um, some Stanford um, organizations that, um, one, one of them being uh, SUPER or the um, – Stanford University Office for uh, Substance Use Programs, Education Resources. Um, and basically what their goal is, is to try and um, break down information about uh, uh, drug use and abuse for incoming undergrads at Stanford um, who, you know, all incoming undergrads as well as current undergrads, as well as grad students. It's really whoever wants to know or needs to know. Um, they can seek out this information. It's in a centralized location, and it's trying to kind of dispel some in, dispel some myths about drugs, um, break down some information um, in just a way that's accessible and palatable. Because there's a lot, you know, the the thing about drugs is that perception around illicit drugs is very much influenced by pop culture, which, you know, <laughs> as we know, doesn't get things right a lot of the time. And so it's just important to have all of this information written down somewhere in a place that people can find. And so that is a mission that I'm very passionate about and very happy to support. And so I've been working with them to um, kind of bring information from, from lab and from just my own personal experience um, dealing with, um, um, thinking about illicit drugs to people who want, who want, or who want or need the information. Um, and so, um, yeah, I mean, that's included creating educational content about, you know, how drug schedules work, you know, how the FDA and DEA creates drug schedules for drugs. What are the implications of putting something as a schedule one drug versus a schedule three or five? Um, 
there, you know, there are different repercussions for having, using, or selling those. Um, just, you know, helping people understand those differences. Um, also, routes of administration for certain drugs is something, something I think I'm surprised that not a lot of people know more about, which is the way you take a drug can drastically impact how addictive it is. You know, the faster it gets to your bloodstream, the faster it gets to your brain, the more addictive the drug will be. Um, so like, I, you know, taking, shooting a drug IV intravenous right into your bloodstream, that goes to your brain, like within seconds, you know? And so mm -hmm. <laughs> that has got to be one of the most addictive. Um, that's got to have one of the highest addictive liabilities. Um, smoking as well is, you know, pretty bad. It gets absorbed into your lungs and goes straight to your brain. Um, yeah, so I, th I think that type of information is also very critical. So I've been um, working with them to kind of dispel some myths about that and also provide information about um, these types of facts surrounding drugs, which I think is very important. And then also... Just like making sure people understand the different categories of drugs. Like you have you have broad categories like opioids, stimulants, depressants. And within those, there are, you know, um, benzodiazepines and like amphetamines and stuff like that. And they all have, they all have very different um, subjective effects. Like when, when you take them, you feel differently. You think about things differently. They have very different addictive liability. Um some of them are way worse than others. And um, just just understanding which drugs go where, how, what, what people think of these drugs. Like um, um, how, how they are considered by governing bodies and by scientists to be you know, more or less destructive for your brain health, because a lot of them are very neurotoxic as well. And in high and repeated quantities, these drugs can really <laughs> do a lot of damage on your brain. Mm -hmm. um, again, I think, that, I mean, risk is significantly lowered with like single low doses of drugs. I mean, I don't, don't quote me on this, but I don't think you'll have much trouble with single low doses of a lot of drugs. But again, talk to your doctor. Um, <laughs> but when, when you get into high repeated doses of drugs, I mean, you, you can do really irreversible damage, especially when you're at a young age, like you're entering college, you're in college, you're graduating from college, whatever. Um, this is a very impressionable time. Your brain is developing. This is the population that needs this information. And so <laughs> I'm very passionate about like getting a lot of this information out. So if you haven't already checked out um, Stanford Office for Substance Use, check it out. We have a lot of resources. We have a website, um, you know, trying to help them, um, uh, you know, share, sharing my insight to um, help them be more accessible, even though they're, they are very accessible, but, you know, any additional um, insight helps. Um, and yeah, I think uh, the other thing that uh, the other effort that I've come across that I really liked was actually a grad student in my lab is uh, last year she started a journal called The Civilian, which is for, um, they have a website, you can check it out, which is for scientists who are publishing papers. They can also include a link in their paper to a lay summary of the paper. So a summary of their paper at say a 12th, a 12th grade reading level where you can click the link and you can read what they've written about it, like summarizing their whole paper uh, just without all the technical jargon, because really to read scientific papers, unfortunately, you need a couple, <laughs> I mean, yeah, you, you probably need a couple of years of training learning mm -hmm. like what all this technical jargon is that you would never need in your own life, um, but that we use every day for science to describe complicated things. Um, and so when you write at a 12th grade reading level, you don't have all this extra jargon. Um, it's just kind of the points are boiled down. They're simplistic. They're easy to understand. And it's an effort that I think is fantastic. It's something I'm doing for all the papers I publish is like writing these um, 12th grade reading level summaries, because I really think that science needs to be more accessible to people who are interested. I think a lot of people are interested, but it's just, it's sometimes it's just out of, out of your grasp. You know, I've, 
so, sometimes it's out of my grasp even like sometimes i i find my i i'm reading papers i come across a sentence that is just so poorly worded i'm like how <laughs> how did this happen like you could have simplified this with a few words um but anyway it's a thing science jargon is crazy um And I thought this effort, this journal called The Civilian was just such a great way to overcome some of that and make information a little bit more accessible. So writing for that, I've also been doing that. Um, Mm. Yeah, I, I hope that answers your question. That's brilliant. Oh, it does. Like three times over. It's perfect. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah, Good. this is so wonderful. I and the the aspect of your the work you're doing with the office of for substance use. I I just find that so fascinating because you're you're not at the age of the incoming freshman. Presumably, I mean anybody Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, can be I'm a not. freshman, uh, you know, but <laughs> at yeah. any age, but majority of the people I imagine coming in as freshmen are, you know, Right. shortly have finished high school recently Right. or, you know, shortly I am after. I am close enough to that age But where that I was know what I was going to say when is that I was an incoming freshman, what information did I wish I had? exactly. And because because I'm so um passionate about this type of research, drug research, um, illicit, you know, studying illicit drugs, I've been able to kind of educate myself on some of this. I've, well, I've also taken a lot of uh, course material like classes. Um, I study it now professionally. <laughs> I mean, I go to grad school um, to study this exact thing. And so I'm just thinking back when I was a freshman and knew very little, um, what was it that I really wanted to know? Um, and so being close enough to that age has kind of helped me shape a curriculum or certain information that I think would be very, very necessary for people going to college, going to college parties for the first time. That's kind of a crazy Exactly. experience, you know, um, Yes. uh, just getting involved in things that they, one, maybe never thought they would, or two, just things that happen on campus, like Mm -hmm. things happen in college, you know, I, Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes. it's crazy. Um, Yeah, that so is. Sorry, Sam, go ahead. no, that's that basically the point. It's just, That that's you why know, I was bringing this up. I wanted to say yes that I think it's so it's it's valuable in a number of ways that you you Sam are offering this education uh and this service to young people who are you know presumably a few years younger than you on average so um it's it is it's also you're they're looking to you still probably as a peer but a peer who has a little bit more experience and you're helping them just navigate their journey their their college Yeah. life journey and you're in some ways, I think you're more credible to them potentially, <laughs> right? Cause you have the professional that's, experience. yeah, it could be. You, you've been out Yeah. of undergrad for Right. however long, but you, you Right. have some professional experience. You have an expertise Right. that you're focused on, but you also were a student. So I, yeah, that is, that Yeah. is why I was, I definitely, I was bringing <laughs> I get that the struggle. up. You know, I get like, Yes. I, I get what it's like to be in college. I get what it's Yes. like to start. I mean, it was, Mm -hmm. it was, it was a while ago, but it wasn't that long ago, you know? Yeah. So it was Yeah. like, um, It's, yeah. it's relatable. It's so relatable. And, Yeah. and the It's important, work. I think, to be able to see yourself in, in someone else, like seeing, Mm okay, -hmm. this is the path you took. This is something that's doable for me. Um, and so just trying to, you know, explain Yes. that best I can. And there's no, there's seemingly no judgment. I'm presuming that from your standpoint, Yeah, hopefully not. there, yeah, there's <laughs> no intentional judgment. And, and right. sometimes I think that can happen even inadvertently the old, the further away we get Yeah. from youth even if we don't intend to be judgmental we can uh appear Yeah, we can have a presence that's true. that's judgmental Yeah, you got to watch and that out for that. can create more of a disconnect or Yeah. you know um Completely just agree. a lack of Yeah. relatability so i think there's that's always something to be mindful of but yes Yeah. i think there's a lot of value you're offering and the civilian which your colleague created Oh, I'm so grateful to know it exists. I will look look into it because <laughs> yeah science, I mean, I think forgive me for being a little for being a bit frank right now, but I I mean this with the utmost respect. I no think science say it say it science can be science is incredible. I mean, this gives us yeah uh we ask questions, we explore, we understand the world better, we create opportunities to heal, to do more and to do things more efficiently, more effectively. It's, we need science. It's, it's absolutely essential to our existence here on earth, but 
it yeah. i think culturally science in the academic culture has elevated itself um in a way that does disconnect from the general yeah. population right in a way that it it it, it doesn't make sense. It, science should be help. <laughs> science should be the efforts of science should be ultimately for yeah. improving all of our lives, or or giving us <laughs> yeah, no, um, more under more understanding, more insight. Yeah. The no, you know the true. desire to know more. So anything that can remove those, yeah, this the gap. Uh, no, I think absolutely is is imperative. And I'm not saying yeah. scientists shouldn't be proud. Of course, they sh science science should be proud of the accomplishments and the achievements, but at the same time, mm -hmm. what's the whole point of it? It's not to be- uh, No, it's to, if, if you can't communicate the ideas that you're finding in lab, what is the point of finding them? You know, like exactly. people need to know about this. And it's yes. just, I know, I hope some of my colleagues will <laughs> forgive me for saying this, but I, it's just, sometimes it really just feels like, how like how can I make this more, compl more complex and convoluted you know, so that the other person will have to ask more questions. And it's like, that should be not yeah. the point. The point should be make it, making it simple, should be making it accessible, making it so that everyone can understand. Um, and that's yeah. something that I've, I really want to do going forward because I've been on the other side as well, where I'm like, what on earth are you talking about? And so now having a little bit more knowledge of what exactly is happening and having some um, experience, um, I know what they're talking about, but I also know how to like, simplify this a little bit and to use words that um, convey more understanding instead of complexity. Um, yes. Yes. And so, yeah, bo Science boiling is... down points is an art. Mm -hmm. I get it. Um, but it's an art that every scientist really needs to devote time to, in my opinion, in my, you know, <laughs> uh, personal you. opinion. But I hear you, Sam. And it yeah. is a privilege to be a scientist and to be in that realm of work. Yeah. It's just, I, it seems like the challenge can be to keep your power in check. Right. And I think that's, <laughs> I think yes. that, but I mean, that it's not just in science, obviously that can be in any field yeah. any of, of work, but it's a privilege. And then I, I would imagine the challenge is yes, to make sure that that privilege doesn't turn into uh, an over hoarding of power. So yeah. I, you know, we're all, we're all part of it. I mean, we're all part of this world. We're all hopefully a part of m wanting to be a part of uh, a civilization that is advancing. Right. And in many ways, I, I, you know, materially, but also spiritually. And what I mean by spiritually right. is bringing more justice into uh, the world and uh, you know, more of a, cohesive sense that we're all in this together. That's what I mean by yeah. spiritual. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to talk about that word, right. Right. but there's a material advancement and then there's a non-material advancement, right? So right. it all goes hand in hand. And I think the more conscious we can become about those two processes, processes unfolding, the better everything gets. And it kind of goes back to our our conversation when we were talking about, yes, these p drugs can potentially bring more healing or deeper healing or just more opportunities to uh, different kinds of opportunities to healing for people. Right. But at the same time, we cannot discount the value of connection. Of right. Right. Nourishing our bodies. And of... uh, to your point, it's, it's more of like a tool to help you do things that are good for you as much as a, you know, a silver bullet, which I think is what you're getting at. Um, is that the, the things that we've talked about that help you feel good, you know, the different strategies, those are really, you know, from my perspective, what I spend the most amount of time on, you know, the drugs, you know, are great, but they're not silver bullets, they're tools in the end, they're tools to help you do what you want, um, which I think is a very important distinction. And while, you know, there are some drugs that do produce very rapid um, antidepressant effects like ketamine, um, that like long-term strategies revolve around lifestyle changes in my opinion. And I think that that is that like that drugs can be tools to help you do those things, but it's not like an end all be all. Um, yeah. Yes. Yes. And yeah, my point was also, I guess I was trying to parallel the idea of like the material and non-material processes unfolding, trying to make that analogy. And maybe I didn't yeah. do the best job with, the drugs being like material 
but the socializing, right. maybe being less material, that's more yeah. about our connection. That's more about just uplifting our spirits and right. being with right. other people to help uplift spirits. Absolutely. And yeah. By, you know, lifting spirits. I mean, just yeah. got to feel better about ourselves Absolutely. and our lives. So. You know, talking here with you has uplifted me. So, <laughs> Oh, Sam, it's mutual. Yeah. It's so nice <laughs> to speak to people who are like-minded, you know? I mean, we're all very oh, different. Yeah. You and I are very different, but yeah, yeah. being like-minded means something. It doesn't mean that we think exactly Absolutely. the same, but mm -hmm. yes, I, but we're, you know, we're kind of heading in similar direction for, right, right, right. for our hopes and what we want to contribute in the world to the world. So mm -hmm. thanks. I, it's been wonderful to chat with you. And yes, I do yeah. feel up, more uplifted as well. And, <laughs> great, great. <laughs> uh, it's, 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 it's hopeful and it's inspiring the work you're yeah. doing. And I wish you all the best in continuing that work. And I want to give you, you, you know, a final, the final word, if you want to leave the audience with any words, of encouragement or wisdom oh. or insight. It's anything. It doesn't yeah. have to be anything um, in particular, whatever you want to. I, I hope that, you know, something in here has been useful for you, uh, for you listeners. Um, you know, <laughs> mental health is a struggle. So many people struggle with it. You know, you're not alone. You're never alone. There are <laughs> at any point in time, like millions to billions of other people who are going through exactly what you're going through. And, the, the question of how do I improve my mental health? How do I become happier? How do I do better things for myself? Has been a question maybe every human has had since the dawn of time. And I think the best thing we can do is to have conversations, generate ideas together, find ways that, that find strategies that you specifically can, can use. To, to improve your own mental health. Everyone's situation is different while, you know, depression is very universal. Um, and yeah, I mean, just, you know, don't be afraid to talk about it is the other thing. Like, <laughs> to, like if, if you see someone struggling, you know, talk to them about it. I mean, there's, there's really no, and this goes back to the theme of your podcast, there is no shame in depression. Um, <laughs> like, it's just, it's a thing that people go through it's a thing that so many people struggle with. It's a thing that too many people don't talk enough about um, with, with, with people important in their lives. And I think a lot of times talking about things, you know, social transfer can just be very, very therapeutic in itself. Just talking about what it is that is upsetting you or talking about this, like what it is you're trying to grapple with, talk, you know, talking about what you're thinking about that day. Um, it's just it's all good stuff, you know, and I, I would recommend it. And yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And I, I hope that, I mean, there are people who suffer, you know, severely from depression. I mean, just even yeah. getting out of bed yeah. is uh, where the challenge begins. And so right. they're not able to even function sometimes for periods of time outside of their house. And, or if they do, it's just, incredibly hard. So uh, there's so many, uh, yeah, so many different levels to, to that experience. Right. But like you said, it can start with even just sharing. So I appreciate, I appreciate right. that idea and, um, want to encourage people to take whatever that next step is for themselves, right. you know, whatever that looks like or could possibly be, there's always Absolutely. a step, there's always a step to take, even if it's, just starting with saying something out loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I always ask my guests at the end, Sam, <laughs> yep. which television show, new or old, do you recommend? It doesn't have to be your favorite, <laughs> uh, but maybe right okay. now or or from the past. But what do you recommend yeah, and why? For sure. Favorite, favorite is really hard. One of my favorites is definitely Breaking Bad. Mm, <laughs> right. I remember watching it when it came out, and it was it's just so captivating. The uh, producer Vince Gilligan is just a master at creating suspense. Um, I love it. It's I, I'm always on the edge of my seat to see what they'll do. Um, yeah, that show is ridiculous. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I have to admit, I haven't watched it. In fact, I started oh. it two weeks ago. Uh, I don't have. Oh. I haven't had TV for like over yeah. ten years, and so okay. I think it's. More recently, it's come to streaming. So now I'm, I've okay. been more like, oh, ready. Awesome. Uh, so I started it just 
first episode. Um, but I, I don't know. I don't actually know if it's the right time for me to continue. This happens all the time with me. There's a show I know I'm going to like, but it's not always the right time for it. Right. But I'm, I'm definitely going to, uh, to make it through because I know it's, it's a powerful. Oh my uh, gosh. It gets crazy. Powerful. (laughs) Yes. Uh, Uh, powerful bit of television. Like you said, just all the elements that come together. So thank you. That's, uh, that's a good reminder that I'm going to keep it. Definitely keep it in the queue. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you again for being with me today in this conversation, Sam. Yeah. Thank you so much. This has been a great conversation. Yes. All right.